Our next guest is a talented comedian who has written a new book called The History of Stand-Up, From Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle, which is available now. Please welcome Wayne Fetterman. <laughs> wow! This is, this is unbelievable. Thank you so much for coming on. Wayne, it's great to see you. How have you, have you, have you been? How, how, how is everything going? Well, it's actually going pretty well. I, you know, everyone does their own self-care during the pandemic. I saw Anna, she did her exercising. And of course I am doing, you know, I microdose Claritin is my system. <laughs> oh, wow. You're microdosing Claritin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. But it's been really fun. It's been really fun. Something crazy happened during the pandemic to me. I had my identity stolen. No. Wayne, that's yeah, yeah. That's terrible. Yeah, so, no, no, it actually was one of the best things that happened to me because I go through life and I wonder, you know, do I matter? Does any of this count? Do I make a difference? And then one day I wake up and someone's like, hey, I want to be you, Wayne. <laughs> wow. Somebody wants to be me. Wow, yeah. that's, that's amazing. Now, I know uh, you and Anna uh, Kendrick worked on a project together and I was going to yes, bring it up. Did. Yeah, yes, well, we well, did. Well, it was on Quibi. It was called Dummy. She played a woman that could talk to a, her boyfriend's sex doll. It was incredible. And I, of course, I think you could tell, I played the sex doll repairman in that. And what happens is the show didn't get canceled. The whole platform got canceled, the whole <laughs> network. Wow, that's a first. <laughs> yeah. But it, apparently, Anna's been able to bounce back pretty nicely. <laughs> uh, I was looking at your, your credits uh, uh, online, and yeah. you, you know you have over 100 credits in, in movies. What do you get recognized the most for? Well, probably uh, maybe Curb Your Enthusiasm, but also there's this thing where I am in like a lot of movies, but just in one scene, like in Legally Blonde, I, I'm part of the Harvard board that lets Elle Woods into college. Pivotal part of that movie, very important. I like that. I'm also the uh, blind guy in Step Brothers. I'm in one scene in a movie and then gone. You never see me again. I call it the Fetterman and out. I'm just in and then and I think it's the Fetterman and out. I think it's because my acting is so precise and effervescent that it just would ruin the narrative arc of any movie. So <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, I want to talk about your book, uh, The History of Stand Up. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited about this, buddy. It is a fantastic book. It's a great read. It's funny. But uh, I, I, I love that you did this. I'm, so, I'm actually like kind of jealous that you did this, that I don't have the brain to do this, but because I, uh, I, I, I love every story in here. Thank you. So, thank you so much. I, uh, it was a great thrill to put it together. I've, again, I've only done stand-up, so this is my first time on the show as an author, so I'll just start right here. Chapter one. <laughs> Who was the no, first no, no, wait, 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 that's Who? not how this, well, you don't read the book on the show, that's not how oh, we I do say. it. No, no, I just talked to you, we talk about the book. Uh, you want me to go to the ending? Do you want me to tell you how it ends? <laughs> no, I, no, no, thank you, I appreciate it, no spoilers. It's the evolution of, of stand-up comedy. I know, and there was people doing stand-up before the term stand-up even existed, so it was like, it's really interesting, like Mark Twain, and there was a guy called Artemis Ward, and I go through every era. Yeah, Artemis, Vaughan, I never even knew clubs. anything about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the term stand-up came about in 1947, but like Bob Hope was doing stand-up, you know, in the 30s and in the 20s and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So we cover all of the whole thing right up through, you know, the comedy boom when you joined in in the 90s. When did, when did you start, Jimmy? Yeah, probably it was 90s. Yeah, 90. Probably. In the 90s. Yeah. So you were at probably at a comedy club. And so we cover the whole right up through the pandemic. We do the greats, you know, Pryor and Moms Mabley, and then we do some like Wally Bogue and Elsie Janice, some people you might not have known about. And, uh, you know, I'm always, a lot of it, there's a lot of George Carlin in this. It's just fun to think about like Carlin is a young comic and then he became this legend and like this story keeps going over and over again and now there's new incredible comedians. So that's what the story is. Wayne, before I give you the, uh, our outro here, I just want to tell you that I actually, you're one of my favorite comedians that I've ever seen ever. And I'm just so honored and lucky that I got to hang out with you and, and work with you. I really am a giant fan of yours, dude. Ah, uh, thank uh, That's incredible. I love the way the audience burst into spontaneous applause when you said that. That was... <laughs> That felt good. Yeah, you're waiting for. It. I, <laughs> yeah, no, no, this has been a blast. And the one thing I really wish I was in studio for 
Jimmy, is just the very, you know, the fact that when you throw, like the host throws to the commercial yeah. and then leans over to the guest and does like a little intimate conversation then the audience doesn't know, no one knows what to say. I, I wish we could have done that, but we can't. But anyway, thanks again for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. I, I, we could, we could, I think we could try to make something work out. Wayne Fetterman, everybody. Hey.